Hi, my name is Kevin and I collect old irons. In the world of detachable handle irons, the most common style by far is the Mrs. Potts. And we've learned about the irons of that group and about Mrs. Potts herself in previous videos. But the second most common style of detachable handle sat irons are products of the Asbestos and Dover companies. These are widely seen in antique shops, but there is nowhere near the same level of interest as in those of Mrs. Potts. Part of this is that the Potts irons are from an earlier era, starting in the 1870s, well marketed with more imagination and made by more companies. The main characteristic of the asbestos Dover irons is a cast iron bottom, which I will here call a shoe. And onto that shoe sat a hood with a shield and handle, and within the hood the lining was asbestos, which was an insulation of fire retardant in those days. The hood contacts with the base was only on the very bottom. The asbestos lining within acted as insulation and kept the handle cool. The mechanism for locking the handle onto the base was very simple. It did not require an elaborate spring and some cast iron parts that so easily broke with the Mrs. Potts handles. Of course, asbestos now has a bad reputation breathing the fibers can be hazardous, but use of these irons was not hazardous as the lining was not in fibrous form and for the most part the lining is no longer in these irons. The first question that came to my mind in researching this group was what came first, the asbestos or the Dover irons? The answer is asbestos. That story begins in 1893 in Slouten, Wisconsin, where two men of Norwegian ancestry, Ole Ferdal and Charles Johnson, decided to establish a company that made sat irons. Here is the original patent for Ole Ferdal in 1900, which shows the essential parts of the asbestos iron. These were manufactured with minimal changes from circa 1898 until at least the late 1930s. The patent for the Dover irons was 18 years later, 1918. Both the asbestos and Dover irons were marketed together after that time. The asbestos and Dover irons were quite similar and varied only in the latching mechanism between the hood and shoe. For asbestos, there was a back and forth latching mechanism, while the Dover irons had a knob on the top that attached to a screw on the top of the shoe. Both groups were made in huge numbers and represent the prevalent detachable handle irons of the 1900s. The Mrs. Potts irons were still made into the 1950s but were much less prevalent. The asbestos irons were, from the very beginning and throughout their history, widely advertised in women's magazines. This is a very early ad from the 1890s for the Tverdal Johnson Company of Slouten, Wisconsin. This is here advertised as the fastest, easiest, cleanest, neatest, handsomest sat iron ever made. This became for a short time the Asbestos Sat Iron Company as seen in this 1898 letterhead. Note here that the set of three irons and a handle would sell wholesale for one dollar. Then in about 1900 Charles Johnson took over from Ole and moved the company to Canal Dover, Ohio, where the Dover Sat Iron Company was established. This envelope, postmarked Canal Dover, was mailed in 1902. The municipality of Canal Dover changed its name to Dover in 1912. The company was quite successful and in the early 1900s was producing 300 to 500,000 items annually. Dover marketed itself as the only manufacturer that made sat irons and only sat irons. Dover also liked to use the middle portion of this word to show their standing as the best iron products. Note that on the side of this wood box used for a set of irons, best is in red. As we will see, Dover also made a diversity of irons that did not use asbestos. And where this was so, the company would drop the two S's to read a best O, as on this sat iron stand. The asbestos irons have a shoe that says asbestos. 
there is surprisingly little variety in the nature of the back and forth mechanism, the shield, the handle. All these are very much the same for the entire 40 year history of the type. However, there is quite a variety in size and there also is variety amongst the shoes here for some sleeve irons but also for other fabrics. Here is a two page advertisement that would have been in the very middle of an issue of Saturday Evening Post. This measures about 13 by 21 inches. We have this framed and exhibited in one of our bedrooms. This shows some of the wide range of asbestos sat iron products for polishing, sleeves, travel, and some of the sets that could be purchased. The company has as its location Canal Dover so this advertisement is from 1912 at the latest. Yes, the Saturday Evening Post in magazine format goes back to the late 1800s. The Dover irons have more variation. Using these two as examples in the latching mechanism, for some they're elevated a bit and for others they are more simple. There also can be differences in the posts, in the handles. And while for the asbestos irons, by my knowledge, the handles are always black, for the Dover irons, the handles can be black as here, but they can be in other colors as well, with red and green being the most common. The Dover shoes also have quite a large variety of different markings. Some are marked Dolly or Lace or can have some business name that is selling the irons. There is, for example, also one that is marked Sterno and sold with the canned Sterno stoves as a travel iron. The Dover irons also have quite a variety that must be toys. I don't collect toys, but we will show a video on these in due course. But I have two here as examples. This one has the detachable hood and shoe the hood here and latch are very simple and this one is a single piece no detachable shoe at all just a cast iron base that says Dover USA here we should digress into some of the manufacturers that made look-alikes to Dover products success breeds imitators as we know from our previous video that showed the variant designs in the Mrs. Potts style. As a fairly early example, this is a Harper made in Chicago, patented 1907. Plainly, the design is inspired by the asbestos irons, but there is no detachable hood. Bottom is all one piece. Uh, the handle comes off by use of a rail. These are very well made and quite sought after by collectors. Values may be $50 to $100. And there's also a very pretty Harper stand that I wish I had to show you. This is a product of the Patent Sat Iron Company, Providence, Rhode Island, patented 1909. The base says Patent Sat Iron. This design was obviously inspired by the asbestos irons but it has a different latch mechanism. The patent here precedes the Dover patent, although the uh, latching device is more difficult to work with and the latching mechanism here is rather fragile and these are often broken. The Dover patent, some years later, was a much easier and more successful design. This is a universal thermocell iron patented in 1911 by the Landers, Frary and Clark Company of New Britain, Connecticut. Landers, Frary and Clark made electric irons and I'm, I'm not sure why they were doing this detachable handle iron. I wonder, and this is speculation on my part, is if the company had made some electric stoves and made these as something that you could put on top of those stoves but they do have a very similar definitely electric iron it's got the prongs back here but it still has get this the detachable handle and
Here again we have the question of why have a detachable handle on an electric iron? It may be because it's part of a transition, but I think that this is actually intended as a travel iron. The handle here designed to make the iron more compact for travel purposes, and also evidence of it being a travel iron, it has a hole in the back, and this hole was for a curling iron that you can insert in here, a curling iron for curling hair. So consequently something that somebody might use on the road. But let's get back to the latter history of the Dover Manufacturing Company. This page is from a 1932 catalog and shows both the asbestos and Dover detachable handle irons still being sold in 1932. I think these must have been the most common detachable handle irons of that period. Of note here in this general catalog, again 1932, that the charcoal and gasoline irons are still being sold. But Dover was making other irons as well. This is a natural gas iron and reading from the top, Dover natural gas iron made by Dover Manufacturing Company, Dover, Ohio. A Dover natural gas iron. I know very little about the period when this iron might have been made. There's no patents that I have, but it was made after 1912. Remember, this is Dover, not Canal Dover. And it comes with a, a Besto stand. These two did come together. They make a pretty good fit. And Dover made electric irons. This is an advertisement from a 1918 magazine. And here is a picture of a Dover made iron from that period. The picture is by Jay Raymond. These irons are very common and Dover made these to include other various company names. This is the Dover Abesto electric iron. Again, photo from Jay Raymond. And here is the back of that iron. Note that this is from Canal Dover, which shows that this iron was made on or before 1912. I do not know this for sure, but I guess that these were often sold with the Abesto stands. Here is an illustration of the Dover electric iron on an advertising tray. An interesting piece of advertising. Note again the A best O. Dover was purchased by the Knapp Monarch Company of St. Louis, a company that also made electric irons in 1936. The Knapp Monarch Company continued to make Dover irons, sometimes called the Lady Dover, into and for some years afterwards still at the Dover plant until the 1950s. Whether it continued to make asbestos or Dover detachable handle irons is uncertain, but I think by then it was pretty obvious that electric irons were going to dominate the industrial world. We might be reminded, however, that non-electric irons are still used in the non-industrial or less industrial world. Can you believe that this is our 40th video on the history of old irons? We've enjoyed these. We will continue doing these. We hope to see you again. Thank you very much.